in behalf of the National Quincentennial Committee and the National Historical Commission of the Philippines, I would like to greet everyone a good day. We will be celebrating a big event in our country's history. We have been preparing for this event for the past two years because we consider this as a milestone commemoration because it happens really once in a blue moon. I am particularly referring to the event that will happen in the first quarter of 2021. This coming 2021, there will be three major events that will be commemorated, not only in our country, but also in other countries as well. For the sake of brevity, I will only introduce three major events from which the commemorations will be centered. The first one would be the anniversary of the first circumnavigation of the world by the Magellan Elcano Expedition. The national government will be partnering with the global network of Magellanic cities in commemorating this event. In fact, this event started already last 2018 in Valladolid when the government of Spain commemorated the 500th anniversary of the signing of the agreement between Magellan and King Charles I. I was personally around to witness this. And thereafter, there were a lot of activities that happened already the anniversary of the takeoff of the expedition in Seville, and just last April, their arrival in South America. Later on, there will be a series of commemorations as we approach 2021. The second event that we are going to commemorate will be the 500th anniversary of the introduction of Christianity in our country. The national government and the NQC will be partnering with the Catholic Bishops Conference of the Philippines in commemorating this event. We are constantly in touch with the leadership of CBCP so that there will be alignment and synergy of our activities. Moreover, I am also personally in touch with Archdiocese of Cebu, specifically with Archbishop Palma, and also with Augustinian friars in the Basilica of the Santo Nino for some coordination. Lastly, I'm also in touch with the provincial government of, of Cebu and also with the office of the city mayor, also of Cebu City, just to make sure that the commemoration of the 500th anniversary of the introduction of Christianity will be smooth and orderly. Now, the third event that we are going to commemorate is the 500th anniversary of the victory of the Filipinos in the Battle of Mactan. This is the activity that will be spearheaded by the national government. And two years ago, the president issued an executive order creating a committee that will help and serve as the clearinghouse for the commemoration. The executive uh, order is numbered 55, and it identified a number of agencies that will collaborate to prepare for this event. So it is chaired by no less than the executive secretary, Salvador Silvideldea, and I am acting as the vice chairman and the executive director of the committee. The members of the committee would include the Department of Foreign Affairs, represented by Yusek Ernesto Avella. By the, uh, the next agency would be the Department of Tourism, represented by Yusek Arturo Buncato Jr. The Department of the Interior and Local Government is represented by Yusek Jonathan Malaya. 
The Department of National Defense is represented by retired Lieutenant General, now Undersecretary of DND, Reynaldo Mapago. The Department of Budget is represented by Undersecretary Agnes Joyce Bailen. Department of Education is also a member, represented by USEC Annaline Sevilla, as well as the Department of Public Works and Highways, represented by Assistant Secretary Antonio Mulano Jr. The same, the Presidential Commission, Commission Communications Operations Office, or the PCOO, is represented by ASEC Mon Kualuping, and the Office of the Presidential Advisor for the Visayan Affairs is represented by ASEC uh, Gerald Gonzalez. And the last agency that is represented in the committee is the National Commission for Culture and the Arts, represented by Executive Director Al Ryan Alejandro. This committee would normally meet every month to iron out the preparations and also if there are some issues that we have to decide. Okay? Now, uh, two years ago, we decided to come up a logo that will serve as the common ground of all these activities. You can see the, the very visible element of the logo is the number 500. It is colored blue because of the symbolism of the ocean. The number five, there is a cross to represent that there is an event, something to do with Christianity. And the first zero in the 500, you can, I think you can, you can see the image of the statue of Lapu-Lapu in the Liberty Shrine in Lapu-Lapu city. Uh, below the uh, number 500, you can see the waves. Uh, this would symbolize the journey of the expedition in the different oceans that they crossed. The official name of the commemoration is, we call this the Quincentennial Commemorations in the Philippines, and the theme is victory and humanity. And there you can find also the period over 1521 to 2021. As I go along, I will be discussing the themes. Okay. In every commemoration that NHCP has, we always, we always put it in its proper perspective. There were some issues that we encountered along the way, and one of which is whether it is worthwhile to commemorate this event, considering the fact that for a lot of people, this is considered as the beginning of the colonization of the Philippines. But for us, we recognize this, but we can turn this around to make it beneficial to our country, so long as we commemorate this using the right perspective. So on the screen, you can see that the way we are going to commemorate this is we will be Filipino and Asian centric. We will be viewing this event from the perspective of the Filipinos. We are going to take this as an opportunity to recognize the achievements of those Filipinos who have been part of this journey. And also, we will identify some of the characteristics of our countrymen during this time. So we will be doing this in collaboration with other countries as well. So for instance, we will be collaborating with the Portuguese. We will also be collaborating with the Spaniards, also with some Latin Americans are also a member of the Global Network of Magellanic Cities and other countries in Southeast Asia who want also to participate in this commemoration. But in the end, what we are going to privilege and what we're going to highlight 
would be the contributions and the achievements of the Filipinos and other Asians as well in this particular big event. The second thing that we have to take into account is we want this event and our activities also to be commemorative. In short, we will be sponsoring activities that we will remind us, that we will refresh our uh, important, uh, the important events that happened during this year. We will be partnering with the LGU of Lapu-Lapu City in reenacting the Battle of Mactan. And I heard that there are also activities in Cebu City that will center on the baptism that happened in 1521. So expect a lot of activities in Cebu. I'm referring to Cebu City and also in the Pulapu City and also in Eastern Samar and also in Southern Leyte. So we will be doing this chronologically. We will start sometime in March in Eastern Samar. We'll go down to Leyte and then we'll move to Central Visayas Cebu City to be specific, and we will be having this big event in Lapu-Lapu City, specifically in the Liberty Shrine. Okay, now, we want also the commemoration to be multidisciplinary. I know that this is a historical event, but we will engage also other professions in this particular commemoration. So we will ask the help of anthropologists and reconstructing the culture of our country in the 16th century. We will also tap the talents of our artists, our theater uh, uh, production teams. We will also tap the talents of our composers and also we will ask the talent of our educators to come up with some pedagogical materials out of this commemoration. So this event will be an event wherein all disciplines will be encouraged to participate. <clears throat> now, let me proceed to the values that we are going to promote as we have this series of activities. One of the values that we're going to highlight as we have these activities is the value of unity. We will focus on this value because I think this is badly needed, not only in our country, but in the world as well, particularly now that we are in the midst of fighting a very deadly and dangerous virus. We will be drawing some inspiration from a lot of people who participated in this journey. Unity, I would say, is, the, the, is one of the secrets that made the circumnavigation of the world a big success. If the Spaniards and the Portuguese did not unite, and other countries as well who participated in the, in the expedition did not unite and did not contribute to this endeavor, I don't think the circumnavigation of the world will be successful. I will also mention that if the Filipinos were not united, I'm referring to the islanders of Mactan, were not united, when they fought the Spaniards in the Battle of Mactan, I don't think they will be successful in that war. And if we are going to apply that in our present context, if we will not be united in fighting COVID-19, we will find it very difficult to defeat this virus. That is why the NQC wants to promote unity in this particular commemorative events. Now the second 
value that we're going to promote is magnanimity. In the commemorative events that we will be having in Eastern Samar, we will emphasize the fact that we Filipinos, as early as 1521, were people of goodwill. We are generous, we are magnanimous, and we have seen this not only in 1521, but also in the succeeding years. So during the first encounter, the Filipinos noticed that many of the members of the expedition were sick, hungry, and some were even dying. And when they noticed this, they gave them shelter. They offered them food, drinks, and they allowed them to recuperate for almost a week in their respective islands. Uh, they did not understand each other, yet when they heard and they, when they saw that they were in need of help, we Filipinos, we extended it to them. Now, this magnanimity that was shown by the Filipinos in 1521 continued in the next generations and centuries. For instance, we offered the same magnanimity to the Jews during the Second World War when they were persecuted by the Nazis. We extended the same generosity to the Chinese during the Cultural Revolution, to the Russians during the reign of Stalin, and also Recently, we extended the same generosity to the Vietnamese who fled their country after the fall of Saigon. So this is another virtue that we Filipinos have that we want to promote and show to the world that we are a country of generous people. <clears throat> now, Another value that we are going to promote in these commemorative events is sovereignty. We want to send a message to the whole world that we Filipinos, we are ready to defend our sovereignty if it is being threatened by external forces. We have seen this in 1521 when Lapu-Lapu defended the island of Mactan and also defended his stand that he wants to be independent from foreign power during this period. Now, this love for freedom, this, this passion to promote sovereignty continued during the colonial years. I'm referring to during the Spanish period that for the whole more than 300 years that we were subjected to colonial rule by the Spanish Empire, Filipinos continued to resist the colonial apparatus introduced in our country until we succeeded in 1898. We continued to defend our sovereignty during the Filipino-American War, early part of the American period, and also during the Second World War. All of these are indicators that we Filipinos value so much sovereignty. Finally, we want also to promote our identity. In the exhibits that we are going to showcase, in our museum, and in the, in the two museums that we are planning to put up in Butuan and also in Mactan, we will be showing to our countrymen and also to our foreign guests that 
as early as 1521, we Filipinos have already an identity of our own. We want to disprove some of the allegations that we Filipinos were not yet civilized when the Europeans arrived in our country in 1521. We will prove and we'll be showing evidences wherein we can see that we have already a system of government. We appreciate already art and culture. We have already a certain level of religion and a few other indicators of high level of civilization. In short, we want to drumbeat the fact that our country's civilization in 1521 can be considered at par or probably even better than the civilizations of other countries in Southeast Asia. Now, what I will be sharing to you in the next slides would be the projects and programs that we have already executed and some are still in the pipeline. Some of these started as early as last year until we reach the main event, which is April next year. Now, one project that we want to undertake is the construction of the Lapu-Lapu Shrine and Museum. We have noticed that we need to balance the number of shrines and museums that we have. Honestly speaking, we have plenty of shrines and museums in the big island of Luzon, and we have only a number of shrines and museums in the Visayas and Mindanao area. Because of this observation, we are planning and proposing to the national government to put up a museum and shrine dedicated exclusively to Lapu-Lapu -Lapu and other heroes of the Matel of Bactan. The proposed site where we are going to erect this will be in the Liberty Shrine in Lapu-Lapu City. We are already almost more than halfway through in the preparation of the plans for this museum. And in fact, we included this already in our budget proposal for 2021. I just hope that the COVID-19 pandemic will not affect this project. Another museum that we are planning to put up is the Museum of Philippine Prehistory. And this will be in Butuan. We're able to negotiate with the local government unit of Butuan City, and they allowed us to restore the old presidential of the city. And we are going to convert this into a museum. Earlier, I told you that it is our plan to showcase the culture and the achievements of the Filipinos before the coming of the Spaniards. And it is in this museum where we will have the galleries detailing the level of civilization that we have in 1521. The next project that we are going to undertake, and it, this is already ongoing, is we are going to mark the places where the expedition anchored, or including also those places wherein there are some events that happened, even if they did not anchor, or they did not get out of their ships. So on your screen, you can see the template marker or the, the pedestal and you will have the marker wherein you will have the information as to what happened in this particular place and at the back of the pedestal 
there will be an artwork that will explain visually the major contents of the artwork, uh, of the marker, I mean. Now, as of this date, we have already identified 32 sites all over the country where the Magellan Calcano Expedition stayed. So it started in the eastern Samar area, as you can see in the map. They will go to Palawan area and then move eastward in the southern part of western Mindanao. And then they will exit in the southern tip part of our country. For us, this is important because this will further enrich our knowledge of Philippine history and also our stock knowledge of the expedition. Because if you will take a look at many of our textbooks, after the event in Mactan, and then the, the subsequent massacre in Cebu, we don't have that much information anymore about what happened to the expedition thereafter. So in this project, it will be explained and later on uh, identified where exactly in our country the expedition lingered after the disaster that happened to them in Cebu. The next project that we are going to undertake would be a series of programs. Some of them were already executed. For instance, we have this partnership with PILPAP, specifically with national artist Ryan Kayabiab, in order to come up with a theme song and a playlist that will be used by the NQC in many of our activities. In fact, one of the, the compositions included in this playlist was already used last June 12 when we had this opportunity to express our gratitude to the frontliners who are helping us fight the coronavirus. Another program, and a good number of them were already executed, is the three countdowns before the big event. Last December 14, 2019, we had uh, 500 countdown to the D-Day. Three cities participated in this event. One is the city of Manila. The event was held in Rizal Park. The second city that joined us, which is in the center of our attention, is the Liberty Shrine in Lapu-Lapu City. And the third city that joined us is the city of Dabao. So we have simultaneous commemorative events in these cities. The next countdown would be the one-year countdown. It happened last April 27 of this year. It's just unfortunate that when this event took place, we are at the height of the lockdown. As you can see in the slide, we only have very few participants in this commemorative event in Lapu-Lapu City, spearheaded by Lapu-Lapu City Mayor Junard Chan and some of, his, some of the members of his official family. Now, during that event, we had some online activities because this is allowed by the IITF. So we had a talk in the morning, uh, practically the whole day. We invited a lot of resource persons. Some of them are ranking government officials. Others are experts, various disciplines, I mentioned, 
because we want the commemoration to be multidisciplinary. And there are even some participants who are based abroad who join our online activities. Okay? Now, last June 12, we also sponsored lectures. Uh, yeah, since we are still under quarantine rules, many of the lectures and the workshops that we had for the past three months were done online. So, as as we would like to participate and to have participants who are physically around, we were not allowed to have this kind of setting. But in any case, we lined up a number of activities and invited a lot of a number of experts who will share to us whatever they know about the events that happened in 1521 and correlate this with the events that are happening in our present time. So we also have a, an online platform. And in our website, you can see some of our animation presentation activities. Later on, we will be uploading primary sources and archival resources that we have retrieved from the different archives, not only in our country, but also abroad. And also, we will be uploading a number of materials that probably teachers can use in the classroom and in their online activities. So feel free to visit our site and choose whatever materials you think you can make use in your in whatever program and activities you are undertaking. We also sponsored an art competition. There are four categories representing the, the themes that I discussed earlier. On your slide, you can see that we are expecting four winners and each one of them will be receiving 500,000 pesos. And there will be eight runner-ups and each one of them will be re uh, receiving 50,000 cash. I would like to take this opportunity to invite our artists to participate in this art competition. While you are under lockdown, staying at home, why don't you get your brush and your canvas? And then send your entries to us. We, are, we will be having three drop of points all over the country. In Mindanao, we will have it in Cagayan de Oro. In the Visayan regions, we will be having it in, Boho, in, in Cebu, I mean. And the entries coming from Luzon will be entertained here in Manila. So I hope that this will be patronized by our painters and, and, and artists. Now, I would like also to take this opportunity to listen and patronize also the songs that build up, develop through the years that we are in engaging with them. It's available in Spotify and I'm pretty sure you will appreciate it. And I hope that you will download it and listen to it while you are under lockdown. Now, we have other activities, but unfortunately, because of lack of time, I will just request you to log on in our website and click the list of activities, and we are inviting everyone to participate. We want, it's really our dream, 
that these activities that we'll be going to sponsor will be patronized not only by historians, not only by academics, but also of ordinary people as well. Now, as we go along, we will be posting the activities that we will be having in our website. Just hope that you will like our Facebook account so that you will be updated of the latest developments as far as the commemoration of the King Centennial is concerned. Once again, in behalf of the National Historical Commission of the Philippines and also of the National King Centennial Committee, thank you very much and we are expecting your full support the activities that we will be sponsoring in the coming months. Before I end, we will be showing you a video that will give you an idea as to what to expect from the commemoration of the first circumnavigation of the world, the circumnavigation of, of the introduction of Christianity, and also of the 500th anniversary of the victory of the Filipinos in the Battle of Bactan. Thank you very much and enjoy the video. In the last 500 years, Filipinos have fought for freedom, unity, and equality. We have made our mark in many fields, from science and medicine to culture and the arts. We are beacons of creativity, resourcefulness, resiliency, and compassion. In 2021, the Filipino people will join the world in commemorating one of the greatest achievements of mankind, the first circumnavigation of the world. We celebrate this historic achievement by bannering an important message. Over adversity and struggles, we shall triumph, putting humanity first, always.